right, so this is going to be a software demonstration of how to make a, a, a point .xp calibration file uh, for your software, for SciTech software. All right, so here we go. I'm going to click on, uh, right now the telescope has stopped. You can see it's right here on the horizon limit. That's where the software bug, or the telescope bug is. Okay, so features. We're going to run a script. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have here, right here, is a virtual camera. I can go over here, I can do a, a single photo init. If I click on this button here, and you can see it's taking the picture. Now it took a picture, and now it's going to init my telescope. So I just synchronize my telescope. Okay, so the, these stars in this image are actually, uh, it's a virtual picture, it's a virtual image that, um, uh, uses a star catalog to place the dots. So that so it uh, plate solve by Dave Rowe is able to solve that and it, so it's really a powerful tool for testing or for you know uh, anyway. So here's the sky view and uh, you can see this little mountain here for the horizon file. Uh, if you have this feature in the latest versions, if you have this feature right here, keep above the horizon limit while slewing, then you will see that it goes up. If you're going to go from here to here, it'll go up first. So if you had an obstruction, it would miss your obstruction. I've always wanted to do it. I finally did it just recently. Okay, so this window here is my interface to Dave Rose Plate Solve, which is extremely fast. You won't even believe how fast it solves like this image right here. Okay, so I'm going to clear this script out, so we can you can see me making the script. Okay, now we're on the plate cell stuff uh, tab. We're going to make, I'm going to do 12 calibration points. A half a second, it doesn't matter for the virtual camera. Bend by one, seven delay, we're going to do seven seconds. And all I have to do is click this button, make point XP run. So there it is. It did 12 calibration points. And you can see um, the, these are comments with the hashtag in front. Then, then we're slowing to out as, which is good because now this same script will be good for all night long if you want. Or the next night. Uh, we wait for seven seconds. Then we take a picker, picture and then we save it. And then we solve it. And then that adds a calibration point. So we'll go over here, we'll call up uh, point XP. We already have a model from last time, so I'll clear those out. If you right click on this, you can clear them. There. Now we have zero calibration points, and let's turn off all the terms. Oops, not model. Disable all, even those two. Okay, so we've disabled all the terms. I'm going to I'm going to close this. Now we're back to our script window. So watch, oh, first of all, I'm going to turn on the future calibration points. So see these red circles here? They're, they're where we're going to be going to do a plate solve. Okay. And then we're going to turn on calibration points too, but we don't have any. But we'll start seeing them. I think we're ready. So here we go. Play. So it had to get up over the mountain, and then it went over to the first calibration point. Now you can see it's, it's waiting right here. There, now it's done. Now it saved the image, and plate solved, solved it that fast. Now it's doing calibration point number two. Now it's in the wait state. Can plate solve work? I can't even finish saying that it's working before it's done. Okay, now watch when it goes from this point to this point. You'll see it uh, go above the obstruction, the mountain. There. Cool. See? And So now we're waiting. Now plate solve is working. It's done. Now we're on to the next one. And So it. Now watch the stars, they're going to, yep, see, we got a different image, and they're, like I said, they're real stars. Smooth and big. 
we can take a look right here. We have one arc uh, second RMS and two arc seconds peak with zero turns on. And what that means is we are all in a virtual mode. You can have the crappiest telescope mount and do the same thing and you'll get perfect uh, you'll get perfect images. So that's pretty cool. You'll get a perfect model or a nearly perfect model with the crappiest mount uh, because it's all virtual. It is a powerful testing tool, though. It's uh, uh, nice to be able to test it using Andy. software like this. We have about four more to do. You can see the, the uh, yellow uh, little circles, those are the actual calibration points. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off the um, future calibration points because we're almost done making the model. Um, okay. Now we're on our last calibration point. Okay, we're done. Now let's take a look at the model. We have 12 calibration points. We have 1.4 arc seconds RMS and 2.8 arc seconds peak. Now let's take a look at the mount model. Zero terms are on. Let's turn them on one by one. That didn't help much. That didn't help much. But, oh, we have an outlier here. See, now we're down to one arc second, but I'll leave it in. You can click on it and disable it. I'll turn on this term which is a feed correction. Now anything fee has to do with a primary axis, so in my case it's a, a, a primary axis. Uh, it would be the azimuth axis if it's an Altaz telescope, telescope, and it would be um, uh, the right ascension axis if it's an equatorial, equatorial telescope. Okay, so we'll turn on one term there, and now look at our nice little small thing. We're at 0.7 arc seconds with 1.4 arc seconds max. I'll turn on the rest of the applicable terms. We're down to 0.3 arc seconds. That's amazing. I mean, that's what point XP does. It takes it from 1.4 to 0.3. And it's even better if you have, I mean, there's a better improvement if you have, uh, uh, in reality, you'll have a, you, you're not going to, in the reality, without a model, uh, you will not have a model this good. Let's say you might have one that's like 30 arc seconds if you have a really good mount, and that'll make it be like four or five, which is really amazing. Okay, so uh, while I got Skyview up, I'm going to turn off the future calibration points, and then uh, we're going to track a comet, a comet, because asteroids take too long to load. They're, it's a big file from the internet, but I'm going to go ahead and download the comets from the internet. Okay, it's already done. Complete. Now I'm going to make sure we load them. So I reload them. Now I'm going to select a comet. So I like to select, you can select by magnitude, you can also select by motion. I like to do fast moving ones. Uh, but sometimes, uh, let's see if there's a fast moving one that's high enough. So we can look at the altitudes over here. Here's a, a fast moving one that's 54 and it's magnitude 17. Let's see where that one is. Okay, that's right over there. Cool. Now, now we have our option to sink or go to. We're going to go to it, and we're going to track it. We're going to leave that checked. Okay. Swing and move. Now we don't see it there. I think it's because magnitude limit will make it be 18. There it is. So you can see the comet there, and you can see if I click here, whoops, I went with the star. There it is. You can see the right ascension rate, the declination rate, you can see the earth distance, um, and you can do a go-to or track it, so that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing, we're going to track a satellite. So I think I'm done with the camera. 
I'm done with plate solve. I'm done with the scripting. Features, satellite track. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is download from the internet. So, we can click on download TLEs. Okay, I, I like to do the low earth orbit ones. So downloading low earth orbit satellites. <coughs> Done. Okay, now we're going to sort by altitude. So we're going to do the highest ones. Now let's see where this one is. Oh, nice one. Look at that. It's going. Now if you have an Aldaz telescope, the azimuth would be going nuts. I'm going to click start tracking satellite. Now what we can do, we can see uh, here uh, our position there. We're, we're real close to an arc second. I can change the gain and, and, and make it even go less. We have a two in there once in a while, but by and large it's about an arc second. Um, tracking a position there, which is pretty good for tracking a satellite. And, um, <coughs> And in reality, this does work very well. So let's track another one. Well, we have to click on reload because these, these, the altitude and the directions, uh, plus sorting by altitude gets out of order by if you wait a while. So here's another one. Look at that one. It's going the other way, but it's a nice high one. Start tracking that one. Through and And there we have it again. Okay, look at that error right here. Okay, let's try to find the fast one. I'll do another refresh. So this is the fastest one I can see that's high. Seven, oh, try this one. It's pretty low. There it is right there. Start cracking. Slim and big. So the reason I like out out telescopes is uh, because it has a pole too. Uh, an Altas telescope has a pole at the zenith, or the zenith, depending on if you're from England or not. And um, I, like, uh, I like my pole to be on the horizon. So the pole is hard to get to. On an equatorial telescope, it's a north celestial pole if you live up north. And uh, so if you're trying to track a satellite through that pole, you're the right ascension is going to go nuts. If you have to try to, or if you're going to try to track a satellite through the zenith, your azimuth is going to go nuts. If you have an alt az, if you have an alt alt telescope like mine, uh, the pole is on the horizon. You never have to go there. Okay, let's do another refresh and see if we can find one that crosses the horizon. Okay, this one's going pretty close. It's not that close. Okay, that's the closest one we can find. So we'll track that one. So you can see here, the so zenith is not going to be any problem. Okay, I think we're done.